Oh, good morning, Lana, and welcome to our science lesson today. And as I promised you, uh, our science lesson will be ways of controlling uh, water pollution. Remember, we have done causes of water pollution. We talked about oil, talked about uh, industrial waste, talked about human and uh, animal waste, talked about floods, talked about acid rain, and all those. So we want to see now how to control that, how to control uh, 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 water pollution. So number one is practicing proper hygiene. Proper hygiene in this case means the human waste, how it is supposed to be deposited, supposed to be put in a, in a pit latrine or even a toilet latrine, I mean a toilet. You don't just uh, uh, empty your bowels anywhere. So you're supposed to control that so that to avoid uh, the carrying of that into water sources. Number two, practicing farming methods that reduce soil erosion. Remember we saw that uh, flowers is one way in which uh, 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 water is polluted and it's the soil that is carried by that water that uh, happens to pollute the water. The, the, the water. So we are saying, you, you practice those uh, farming methods, practices that will, uh, will, will, will reduce soil erosion. Like for example, terracing. When you do terracing, you, you reduce um, um, real erosion. When you do, for example, planting plant cover crops, you are reducing a uh, uh, splash type of erosion. And so, if you do that, soil will not be carried into water sources. Then number three, drawing water for animals instead of taking them into the water sources. Remember, when you take them into the water sources, they are going to drink the water while they are still inside the water. And may, maybe that water is used by another person. Just a few meters from there, maybe they want to use it for, for cooking. So you know what they do? They are, the animals will take the water and then drop their droppings inside the water. Or even sometimes urinating the water. As they also enter into the, in, 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 into the water sources, like the rivers, they step on the, the river banks. So the river banks, over time, they become loose. And so the soil, once it rains, the soil is carried into the water sources. Then number four, say controlling the dumping of industrial waste. And you avoid dumping of this industrial waste into water sources. Because some of these industrial waste have, have chemicals. So once directed into the water sources, they are going to affect the aquatic life. And most probably they are going to kill them. Number five, clearing accidental oil spills as soon as they occur. We know that uh, oil is one of the uh, pollutants of water, meaning that once it's somewhere, there's no air entering in that particular area, either on the soil or even water. So that will affect the aquatic life and also the soil. The soil will become uh, poor in such a way that uh, animal, I mean, the plants cannot be able to absorb anything from that soil because the soil is already having oil. And then lastly, controlling the use of farm chemicals. Remember we said excessive use of farm chemicals may lead to, to, to soil becoming loose and being carried away by, by, by water, uh, the rainwater in the water sources. So you avoid using excess of this. So pesticides and besides ensure that you use just the, the required ones. So, so much for that, uh, we move um, to the important thing I wanted us to discuss today, and that will be um, ways of conserving water, conservation of water. How can we conserve water? Ways of conserving or methods of conserving water. Now, in this case, what is conserve? To conserve means to preserve, preserve, preserve for future or later use. We want to ensure that in future we have water for use. So how can we be able to conserve what we have now so that we can get some that we can use later when there is no enough water around? So number one, you realize that we have what we call water harvesting. Water harvesting. We don't only harvest crops, we also harvest water. I give you an example of uh, our school. You have known, uh, you have known that we bought some. Uh, the school bought some tons there. The, the, the ten thousand tons that were bought. They were bought so that we can have water, sufficient water in times when the clean water is not around. Is not there. Is not running in our, in, our, in our taps. So the water is collected from the rooftops, 
and directed into the tank using what we call gutters. So gutters are used here, are used to direct rainwater, rainwater into water tanks. Water tanks. So that at least we'll have some water to use in future. Now, is this water a, 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 a disaster when it's falling down on the, on the, on the, from the rooftops to the ground? It's true that uh, this water running from the, 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 the roofs can also cause what we call splash erosion. So over time, you'll find that where, where the water lands, you'll find some holes there. The, water, the soil has been, drawn, has been drawn away, and you have some ditches there. So over time, you find that all that soil is carried away, and so even planting some flowers along the, the, the just opposite to where the, 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 the house is, it's, it's, not, it's not easy because the soil is carried away. So one way of uh, uh, ensuring that we have water for future is water harvesting. Like right now, it's raining in Mombasa. I want to imagine that all of your tanks back in your place where you, you stay are full. If you have not done so, you have, you, have, you have let a lot of water to be wasted. So you need to capture this water so that you can use it not, not only for drinking, you can use the water for, for cleaning, maybe washing. You can also use that water in the farms, your kitchen garden there. You can use this rainwater. Instead of using the water that is, that is that, uh, generated or uh, a pump using the, 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 the power, that will increase power bills. So use the water that we've just collected directly from the roofs and you can use it uh, for irrigation of some few crops there, square week and, and so forth and so on. So that, that is one way, water harvesting. Number two, we have what we call cycling water. Now I want to explain the word cycling. Recycling in this case means we treat this water that is not, it's not safe for human consumption to become safe, to become harmless. So water, water is passing through a process into a process before before used again. You can talk about before reused. So recycling means water must be treated. Treatment of water. I was talking about the leather turning industry where uh, leather is, 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 is treated so that it becomes soft. The hides and skins that we sell to those industries, they are treated to become soft so that can be used to make shoes that you wear at school. There are those leather shoes, they come from the leather tanning industry. So there's that water that's mixed with chemicals and then what happens is that after, after washing the eyes and skin to make them soft and maybe remove the fat, what happens is that that water is channeled through, through a tunnel out of the, of the industry and uh, maybe deposited elsewhere. So before this water is, is released, after it has been released from the, the industry, it must be passed through another, pl another place. Assuming this is a tunnel, there's a, there's a tank here where chemicals are, are hardened here so that this water from the industry can be treated first before releasing them maybe to the nearby river or even nearby shamba. If you don't do this, this water is still hazardous. As some uh, uh, effect, as some effect to either animals or even plants. So this treatment, which is done here, a treatment, uh, I mean, a, a recycling plant. A recycling plant is where the water will be treated. So whatever is done here is addition of chemicals to make these chemicals harmless. To make this water harmless. It cannot harm anybody who uses it or even a plant that uses it. So that you can even direct it to, to river because the water is safe now. And it's rich of um, some, some, some very nutritive things that can be found there. So once it's directed into the river, the planktons and, 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 and the fish will be able to use that, maybe to get some nutrients. But before you do that, before you direct the water into the river sources and the water sources, if you don't treat it, then that becomes, becomes something uh, uh, that can lead to killing of uh, some fish and all that. So cycling in this case means treatment before you use again. Because remember this water has been used 
to, 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 to treat the, the, the leather. After that, we want to use it, but before we use it, it has to be made harmless. So that is one way. So after doing that, this water can be used later either to water plants or even uh, 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 directly into water sources. Number three, of course, we're talking about... Uh, now, here, we're going to talk about recycling sewage. Most of this water, we call it, from the water that we use for other purposes, we can call it sewage. So sewage has to be, to be made harmless before that water is used to grow some snowflake and spinach for you to consume. The other one is reusing. Now, contrary to what we have said here, reusing, you use, it, use the water directly. Used directly for another purpose. Purpose without, without undergoing recycling. What are we, are we saying here, Lana? That this water is not harmful. I mean, it's not harmful. So what happens? The water can be used for another purpose, just the same way, in the same stage it is. That is what we mean by reusing. Use it once and again. I will give you examples. Water that has been used. Water that is that is used to wash clothes can be used to mop the house. Remember, water that has been used to wash clothes. Is not is not having chemicals in it. It is just water that is dirty. So that water can be used to, 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 to mop the house. So the water has not been treated before you mop the house. So that is what we mean by reusing. You use it in the same state, the way it, it was. However that it was, but you don't you don't treat it before that. So you are not talk about the water that you, you, you maybe use to wash sufurias and utensils. You can use the same same water. To water your kitchen, uh, I mean, the, the garden, uh, your garden crops, maybe some week around there. The same same water that you have used to wash for years. Just take it to the to the chamber and then water some plants there. That is reusing water. But you can't tell me that the water that you used to, to, to wash for years, you're going to wash to, to, to mop the house. That is not it's not logical. So in an exam, they bring such answers. So you must be very careful. To look at the answer and know which one is, is applicable. You can't use uh, water that you are using uh, to maybe to, 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 to do some sprayers, to, to wash some sprayers, to go and mop the toilet. It's not possible. So, reusing means you use in the same state it was without undergoing any treatment. So, I want you to differentiate between recycling and reusing. And mostly this is done in the industry. Recycling will be done in the industry. You can do it at home, but in a small scale. The other one, of course, um, is what you call using water sparingly. Using water sparingly. Let me just write it there. Using water sparingly. That is number E. That is number five. What do you mean by sparing it? Without wastage. Without wastage. You just use what is now for the purpose, for whatever you want to do. So you just use what is now for whatever you want to do. And uh, these are some of the areas where we use water sparing. Like, like for example, use a basin, a basin to bath, to take bath instead of instead of, of the shower. You know that shower throws water all over, and some of the water, maybe you, you leave the tap running while you're still scrubbing yourself. So instead of leaving the, 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 the taps, the, the, the shower running, you can instead use the, a basin. Just place enough water in the basin and go to the bathroom. Number two, you use, use a cup. To draw water, to draw water for brushing instead of using the tap. Sometimes people will go to the tap, just brush from the tap. The water is running and uh, is uh, you still brushing. 
then is after that is when you now use the water. But you left the water running. That is misusing of water. So instead, use a cup. Even if you brush for three hours, the water is still in the same amount that you put in the cup. So that is the water that you, you use maybe to, to, to finish your brushing. Number three, you close taps when not in use. Close taps when not in use. Ensure that you close taps when not in use. Close taps when not in use. Of course, number, number four, you repair. You repair leaking, leaking taps. You repair leaking taps. Don't let any water go away and accounted for. Because if a, a tap is leaking, those small, small drops is counting in the cubic centimeter or cubic meters that the final, the final reading will can't be done by that water uh, person from the water. The person will not want to know whether it, it, it is a tap which was leaking. No, but it's accounted for and you're going to pay for it. So to avoid that, repair any leaking taps. Close taps when not in use. Don't leave taps running and then you go to the market. You come back every, everywhere in the house is, is, is full of water. So ensure that you do. And so many other ways of using water sparing without wastage. Without wastage. The next one, of course, is uh, what we call mulching and shaping. Mulching and shaping. It's another way of conserving water. That is number number six. Number five, sorry. Number five. Now, what is mulching and what is shaping? I want to differentiate between the two. Now, by drawing some diagrams here. Now, mulching is when you place some dry grass and leaves and this must be organic what do you mean by organic learner that they can be able to decompose remember what you are doing when you talk about inorganic or organic fertilizers organic means whatever you place you cannot place some pieces of paper here the nylon papers here that is not mulching you only mulch using items or materials that can easily rot, decompose. So that after decomposing, there is an effect for that. They will fix nutrients into this particular plant and they will be able to utilize it. But now I want to explain what mulching is. You place them around this place. And why are we placing them there? To prevent direct sunlight from heating. That is the thing I'm talking about here. To heat, to heat around this place. When, this, when the sunlight comes from this place, that means that this place is very hot. And because of that, the available water which is here is going to evaporate. And therefore, every day you'll be watering your plant. But when you place these materials here, you can water the plant only twice a week. Because water is not evaporating. Much of the water is being utilized by the plant because it's not evaporating through, uh, the, 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 the sun, during the sun days. So that is what we call mulching. Now, shading is almost the same, but shading is done on a, on a nursery bed. Then I told you the difference between a nursery bed and a, and a seed bed. Here we have our small seedlings here in a nursery. That is our nursery. So what happens is that initially when we have we have prepared a nursery, we, we place the seeds, then after placing the seeds, we, we, we also add these mulches. We add mulches and then you wait for about seven days. So by seven days, these uh, seeds have germinated, so I've grown to small seedlings. So you remove this mulch here and bring it up using some 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 pegs like that. You peg four times the size of the the size of the of the of the, of the, of the nursery bed, and you raise it so that now the mulch will come on, on this point. Remember, the importance of this mulch is the same as this one to prevent direct sunlight on this particular uh, seedlings. Because if there is direct sunlight, this, these seedlings are going to die, number one. And number two, any water that you apply on this particular area will, will evaporate because of the heat from the sun. So these marshes are preventing direct sunlight to this particular area. So that's how we do it. So this is a nursery bed. 
Maybe to mention what an a, a seed bed is. Now, a seed bed, this is a, a, um, a land that has been specially prepared to receive seedlings. Specially prepared to receive seedlings. So in this case, we call it the, the garden now. After these seedlings have grown to a uh, considerate uh, um, height, you remove them from here. You approve them. Maybe using what you call a dibla or something like that. Dibla, something like that. So you take them to the shamba. That shamba you're taking them to go and, and plant them. That is what you call a seed bed. But this is just a by the way. It's not coming in the exam. But it's, that is what you call a seed bed. Just for your own general knowledge. So there's a difference between nursery bed and, and, and a seed bed. So mulching and shading helps prevent evaporation of water. Remember our, 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 top, our subtopic is conserving water. We want this water to remain here for a long time. For a long time, so that you can be able, can be able to be utilized by the plant. The last and uh, last point, that is number six, construction, constructing, constructing dams. In areas where we have a lot of uh, floods and we have a lot of rains, we construct dams. Dams are built maybe across rivers. You can have a river, then you come and build. You build your, build your, your dam like that. It's a barrier across a river so that this water does not go anywhere on the other side. It piles here. The water piles on this side. And if you can remember, I said in a, in, in a dam, the base is the base is always stronger. A dam will be made like this. The base is always stronger compared to the as you up, uh, uh, go up. Why? This this place here is, is, is experiencing a lot of pressure because more water is on this side. We want to say that pressure increases with depth. As you go down here, water is becoming much. So that's why you see we find them uh, constructed like this, a V-like shape. So that the base is very strong compared to the to the top here. So I'm saying this uh, uh, dam. Constructed helps accumulating a lot of water here and this water can be used number one For irrigation during dry season or it can be used to water animals during dry season So the importance of this uh, dam is just to collect enough water when it is there so that during that time when it will not be raining Then we have a lot of water here to do our irrigation. So that marks the end of um, our subtopic today ways of conserving water remember we have talked about we have talked about a number of them. We have said harvesting water, recycling water, mulching and shading, uh, reusing water, talked about uh, constructing dams. All these are ways of ensuring that we have water for future. So until next time, Lana, I want to give you some work uh, about, uh, about uh, 10 plus 20 questions. So on page, on page, page 91, page 91, in primary science, you do revision exercise 1, 1, and revision exercise 2. This is very important for you, learner, to be able to do. Maybe I do two questions with you, then I leave you to do the rest. Number one, acid rain forms when dash and dash gases dissolve in rainwater. That's our question. Acid rain forms when dash and dash gases dissolve in rainwater. Remember what I said, Lana? I said all of them are dioxides. Are dioxides. Meaning, I don't want to see anybody writing for me carbon monoxide. And I've said all of them are dioxides. So sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide are the two gases. Then the last question I'm going to do with you, that is uh, Which of the following is not an effect of water pollution? Which of the following is not an effect of water pollution? Number one, A, spread of waterborne diseases. B, corrosion of roofing, uh, roofing ion sheets. C, soil acidity. D, soil erosion. Which of the following is not an effect of water pollution? Spread of waterborne diseases, 
corrosion of iron sheets, soil acidity, and then soil erosion. So which one is not uh, is not caused by by water pollution? Number the answer is dog soil erosion. Soil erosion is not an effect of water pollution. So with that, Lana, I want to wish you well. Until next time, may you enjoy. Thank you.